Phoebe Price wasn't born in New Mexico, but for more than half a century, it seems he's been making up for it. An educator, a journalist, a poet, author, husband, all kinds of things. His focus, however, has turned into Mexico's environment in his latest book, The Orphaned Land, New Mexico's Environment Since the Manhattan Project. That's soon to be released by UNM Press. Phoebe, good to see you. It's been quite good a long here. time. You, you're right. no stranger to these studios. Your book takes us through where New Mexico has been on the environment for all kinds of issues, water, air, munitions, uh, dumping, all that kind of thing. Right. Since the Manhattan Project, let's start with that Manhattan Project. Clearly, this was an era where we weren't watching as closely because nobody knew, right? Right. So now we're in catch-up mode. What happened during the Manhattan Project that sent us down this path you've written about? Well, there's a, a wonderful historian named Kevin Fernland who wrote a book called The Cold War in the American West. Mm -hmm. And he asks the question, did the Cold War transform or deform the American West? Mm. And I believe the answer is that it did both. Obviously, it grew us hugely. We became almost uh, the nation's most important intellectual scientific center for the Cold War. Uh, it also resulted in, from what we can tell now, some 2,100 waste sites in Los Alamos and some 400 waste sites in uh, 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 Sandia Labs, all, kind, all kinds of dumping into canyons and into, into Terrace Arroyo. Uh, lots and lots of problems. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, it's almost as if this place that you and I love so much, because we're not natives, but we're almost natives now. There you go. You know, it's the most beautiful, uh, magnificent place in America. Yeah. It's almost as if it was turned into a sacrifice zone. Uh, the Navajo Nation, for instance, had no cancer to speak of until the, the uranium boom in the 1950s. Mm. And I believe the same is for Akama and Laguna. So there was a tremendous impact on native populations uh, there because because the South Valley, uh, uh, Sandia and Los Alamos were part of a triad. Um, the South Valley had huge amounts of water pollution from what's now known as the GE plant, which incidentally uh, resulted in the largest uh, environmental lawsuit in the history of the state. Hmm. The state of New Mexico sued GE in about a hundred other contractors, subcontractors, and other people for about six billion dollars. Wow. It's a story we never heard of because nobody wanted to cover it. Interesting. Uh, but all over water pollution mm -hmm. that, that closed two city wells. So there's been a tremendous price we've paid. Interesting. And when I observe this, the tension points between what's good for the citizenry and our collective health and the labs themselves, there seems to be a disconnect, meaning who should do what, who should pay what, and by when. And that's usually the big hang up. What's going to get cleaned up by when? Historically, what's happened in that relationship as the years go on past the Manhattan Project? Certain administrations have had better luck than others. Have you seen a commonality of what makes that so? I think the biggest, biggest problem is what Rachel Carson uh, ran into when she did her work. Not here, of course, in 1962 about uh, pesticides and DDT. There is a tremendous denial on the part of uh, companies and producers of, of toxic waste and uh, uh, the people who worry about uh, its impact on the public. Uh, so I'm always asking in this book, uh, who do you believe? Do you believe uh, a scientific community who is you know, wor world renowned, uh, who is constantly saying that no, all of the dumping that we've done has had no impact on public health? Or do you believe uh, public health uh, 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 physicians and uh, 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 environmental groups and uh, non-connected people who don't have anything to do with that science mm -hmm. who say that, yes, there's a tremendous amount of worry about this. And when you put uh, plutonium in the water supply and other things, uh, you're causing considerable uh, risk of danger. So the question is always, who do you believe? The classic example of this, if I can go on is just a second, is Please. that uh, uh, the president's panel for uh, cancer in the environment, <coughs> which was convened by uh, George W. Bush and, and which uh, presented a report uh, to President Obama last year, uh, said that, that the impact of pollution on public health has been, quote unquote, grossly underestimated mm. in America. Interesting. The next day, the American Cancer Society said, while it is a critical while it's critically important, uh, the real and most important causes of cancer are, 
or tobacco, obesity, sunlight, and alcohol. So who do you believe? Two perfectly credible people. And you really can't, you know, you can't make enemies or evil people out of either one sure. of these sides, although uh, lots of politicians try to do that. Sure. But everybody's trying to do their best. Just whose story does the common person believe? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Did you find in, as you tick through the years, there was a very specific threshold point crossed where environmental consciousness in New Mexico uh, really exploded amongst the citizenry? Earth Day opened up uh, lots of organizations and lots of people, well, incredibly well-meaning people who have spent years and years and years trying to study this issue. Uh, people like uh, uh, the Southwest Research and Information Center, sure. like um, uh, the Los Alamos Study Group, mm -hmm. and many, many, many other people. So there's literally thousands and thousands of very intelligent people in New Mexico who are can rabidly and intellectually solidly concerned about, mm -hmm. about the environment here. It just seems like the public's thrust always, it doesn't seem to last very long on these issues. What, what do you think goes on there? There's, there's a bubble of protest, professional watchers stay with it, but then the general public doesn't seem to quite get stitched into this. That's a really good question, Gene. I, I think you're right. Um, I think uh, probably Rachel Carson said it the best of all. She said, when I started learning about DDT, I didn't want to think about it. Uh, I didn't really want to spend my time worrying about this almost impossibly complicated matter that whole companies were spraying crops. And, uh, and I think this mm -hmm. is what happens also, I think, uh, uh, here. This is when you begin to look at all of this. And I just really just barely scratched the surface, I think. I mean, there's so much stuff. To your mind, it, other than the late Mr. Udall, who was one of our great environmental uh, advocates in this country, has anyone really staked out ground on the environment, on national politics in your view, or even locally, that you can turn to and say, this is the person, he or she is the one that's leading the charge on this these days? And if not, why, why is that? Why can't a politician get in front of this? Well, I think Tom Udall has. Okay. Um, I, think, I think probably Marty Tavis has, mm -hmm. um, uh, but I think really this is almost too hot, hot a potato for, uh, for most people because it deals with really a fundamental conflict. Mm -hmm. it deals with matters of public health, your health and my health, and fundamentally profit margin. Yeah. Not profit, but profit margin. Sure. How much are you gonna make? Mm -hmm. uh, and so in a certain sense, the people who make money from not uh, paying for their pollution uh, are making money uh, by risking our health. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and I believe that their their philosophy is a is an ends uh, justifies any means philosophy. So, if that is the end, if profit is the end, then you're going to do anything to get there. Right. And it's not necessary to make money by pollution. You don't have to do that. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's the one place that is so invisible and so hard to deal with, which is why I'm really lucky to have a photographer like Nell Farrell mm. in this book, because this part of the problem, why, why the public recedes from this, is that this is invisible stuff, except for air pollution. Gotcha. You can't see water pollution. You can't see soil pollution. It's very, very hard. And of course, uh, the vast majority of New Mexico is, is national security pollution. Right. So right. Uh, it's... You know, out of bounds. The big topic these days is uh, fracking. Yep. And it's it's been interesting to watch this thing track. Kind of did this typical, you know, those who needed to know kind of poked along, and then suddenly we had a little uptick in understanding, and then a big uptick in <laughs> understanding. <laughs> Huge last couple of years. Huge, huge, huge. Does this give you some hope and comfort that you know issues like this can get on the table? Sure. I think once, you know, once uh, uh, smart people uh, get a hold of this stuff, and they then they begin to realize that they're being gamed by the system. Uh, and once it happens in very powerful places like New York and Pennsylvania, uh, well then that really makes a difference. But here, you know, it's not quite a fracking issue, but, but it's almost as bad, I think. When, uh, when the Air Force spills over many, many years, eight million gallons of jet fuel, which is three million less than the Exxon Valdez, wow. uh, and then they don't, and their inventory doesn't, account for it or something, you know, and then, and then suddenly we have to deal with it uh, a mile away from the sweet spot of our aquifer. Right. 
just just a little tiny bit in moving uh, in moving right uh, you have a real public health problem sure I sure think. uh you know, yeah it's a it's a disaster actually yeah. it's really quite something what surprised you in your research for this book anything jump out that was like i followed this for 30 40 some odd years i didn't know about x anything really jump out at you oh boy that's also a good question i think um what really struck me is is the water issue okay. uh, uh the water problems between the growing urbanized uh, world in New Mexico and and the shrinking but politically powerful rural uh, world in New Mexico, the incredible uh, a complication uh, that has to do with water in our state, our drought, uh, climate change, and those things. I mean, they, you know about that, but the implication of having a a century uh, record-breaking drought mm -hmm. here and then having uh, nine or ten years of Bad, bad drought in the Colorado River Basin, and a lot more projected for that area. And and we're starting to live off an Albuquerque, off of off of a, a Colorado River water. That's right. Uh, uh, this is a thing that nobody even thinks about. The politicians don't talk about it. Yeah. Nobody talks about it. That surprised me. I was also surprised that at how, despite the very good back page coverage, all over New Mexico of environmental issues, mm -hmm. how huge things never got covered. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Editors just didn't see any readership in it, I'm going to assume, back in those days, right? I mean, nobody, yes. yeah. Uh, there was a $6 billion lawsuit uh, that New Mexico brought against, against uh, GE and about, and about 100 different uh, uh, companies that never made the front page of the paper. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's the largest uh, lawsuit in New Mexico's history. We lost it. They covered the loss. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Uh, uh, they didn't cover the implications, which closed two city wells, and uh, will take another 20 years to clean up, and once it's done, the, the water still won't be potable. That's right. Interesting. BB, thank you so much for coming in. My pleasure, and it's an honor. I'm a fan. I just have to tell you, I just well, want to tell the folks out there, I'm a huge fan. Well, when I first pleasure, moved right. here, I, and I tell this to folks all the time, one of your books, City at the End of the World, is a must read if you're coming to live in this state and live in Albuquerque and understand what we've got going on here. So good for you for this next effort. The Orphaned Land, New Mexico's environment since the Manhattan Project. Next, the line hashes out the politics of the environment. One party says like, oh, that's what the eggheads think or oh, that's what the scientists think. But, but we have a different opinion. They're not applying the same set of standards to their decision making as, as a set of decisions that are made on, on scientific research. The do good are saying, oh, we're doing this for the good of everybody. And, and they're finding their scientists to back them up. Right. As there are the guys on the corporate side saying, now, wait a minute, you're telling us we got to spend $50 million more for no discernible difference in anything we're doing other than the price of power.